In this lesson, we'll learn how to begin designing our vehicle based on our 3D sketch. All right, so again, I'm working with the project file 03 underscore begin. And what I've done is I've gone ahead and drug in the layer that had the profile, uh, the kind of the detailed profile, the line work profile of the vehicle into the corner here. And you can see I've got that on its own layer here so we can hide that. And what I'll be doing is as I draw this vehicle in a three quarter view, I'll be looking at that as reference for some of those key details that I've already established. So um, you can see here that I've already gone ahead and masked out our vehicle. If I shift click on that vector mask, you can see here that JPEG has simply been dropped here into Photoshop. Now I am working with a fairly large file. If I come up to image and image size, you'll see here that it's about 5,000 by about 3,500 pixels. It's going to allow me to zoom in really, really closely for a lot of that fine detail as we get this thing refined to the point where we want it to be. So uh, now I'm not sure how big the project file will end up being by the time we're done. Hopefully just being line work, it won't be huge. But if it is too big, I may have to resample that down some just so it's not a huge download for you. So uh, I tell you what let's do. Let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my placed image here of the three quarter uh, 3D sketch and let's just drop the opacity on that here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer above that and let's just call this perspective. So I know that I mentioned in the last lesson that really the purpose of having this 3D sketch here is to hold the perspective and that is very true but the way I like to start out with this process is by reinforcing that perspective. Obviously we're not going to be able to draw out a traditional say two point perspective using two different vanishing points. If we're zoomed in this closely on our subject using a two point perspective then our vanishing points are probably going to be way up here somewhere around in here way off our canvas. So we're going to have to sort of imply that perspective, so to speak. So I tell you what, let me go ahead and grab my brush tool here, hitting the keyboard shortcut B, and I'm just going to come in here on our perspective layer, and I'm going to pick out some of these key lines that I think are important lines to remember. And I'm going to extend those beyond our, uh, sort of beyond our image here, just so they're nice and visible. Now this will be a layer that I use more as reference in addition to this image. So I'm just going to come over here, and with the brush tool in Photoshop, you can simply drop one dot, hold shift and drop another dot and get a straight line drawn between those two dots. Now uh, that's not exactly the line I was looking for so if we want to we could either redraw that line or we could come in here using our lasso tool with the keyboard shortcut L switch to our selection tool by hitting V and then show the transform controls and we could rotate that just a little bit if we want to. Maybe rotate it to where it's sitting right on top of that line right there. So I think that's a pretty important line to keep. Let's hit Control D to deselect that and switch back to our brush tool here. Now we hit this kind of this front edge of if we looked at this vehicle as one big elongated cube, we kind of hit this top edge of that that cube here. So let's go about picking out some of these other lines. Now uh, if we come back here and maybe look at the back end of it, the back end is actually significantly narrower in the model uh, and you know maybe I want that or you know maybe my final vehicle doesn't need to have that. So, uh, But what's important is this edge right here. I'm going to go ahead and draw sort of a perspective line that's going to help us keep track of that edge. And that's not quite where I want it, so uh, we can go ahead and just lasso that up and rotate it around. Maybe even zoom in really close here and nudge that into place using the arrow keys on our keyboard. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so we've got kind of the front edge of the top of the cube and the uh, on the front side and on the back side here. So uh, let's go ahead and think about maybe the side edges here. Now I'm looking here uh, at the lines in the model and I'm not seeing kind of a line that's going to run the entire length of the vehicle but what I am seeing is a nice line here that I'd like to keep that sort of hits on uh, these wheel wells here. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw a line straight back based on that and we'll go ahead and click here Go ahead and click there and you can see here that doesn't quite line up so I'm going to come over here and move my first dot over just a bit. 
And that one's pretty close. So uh, this is probably a good time to let you know that I am using a pressure-sensitive tablet and stylus. So uh, we're actually going to be taking advantage of that once we begin actually drawing the vehicle. But uh, for the purpose of laying down these perspective lines, I'm using a very simple brush. And you can see here that I really don't have many options turned on at all on my brush. So we will just go ahead and hide that again. And let's go ahead and maybe pull out the edge of these hubs as a uh, hit on the outside here for this particular line. So I'll go ahead and click there, maybe there. You can see here that wasn't even close. We'll just undo that. Now it may take you a few tries to get the line exactly where you want it to be, especially once your lines start crossing. But uh, eventually you're going to get that line exactly where you want it to be. Again, these are really only reference lines, so it's not so important the cleanliness of them as, as more as it is the actual position of the lines. So uh, you can see here that line wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. Go ahead and click kind of in that same spot over here. And click right about there, and that looks a lot better. So we're hitting kind of the outside edge of each of those hubs running along the vehicle here. Now you can see just a little bit of tapering here based on the perspective that was used by the 3D application uh, when it was rendering this out. So you can see here that the space between these two lines is actually a little wider than the space between these two lines. Even though we've pretty much drawn these uh, lines exactly the way they should be, or parallel exactly with these lines in the... Uh, in the model itself. So uh, we've actually drawn several lines that would actually go to these vanishing points that are way out here. If we were actually drawing those perspective lines uh, the way perspective is traditionally drawn. But I tell you what let's do. Let's go ahead and focus on some of these vertical lines. Maybe the lines right here in these hubs. So I mentioned that we're going to use a two-point perspective for this particular drawing. So let's just go ahead and assume that each one of these lines we're just going to draw that completely vertical. So I'm just going to go ahead and click once and hold down shift and we're going to draw a completely vertical line there, just like so. Make sure I got that right on that edge, and it looks like it's pretty close. So we'll come over here, and let's go ahead and do the exact same thing for this hub. And looking for additional places where we need a vertical line, let's go ahead and draw one right about here. And I'll go ahead and draw one right about here as well. So you can kind of see with these two lines that I've drawn last, we've kind of established sort of the corners of the uh, rectangle, so to speak. It looks like I got off a little bit on this particular line. But I think that was actually because of the line that I was looking at in the actual render itself. So uh, we'd probably have a, a more natural line right here to establish that corner. And if we want to go ahead and come in here and draw that in, we could do that just like so. Depends on how many lines you want to lay down. I tend to lay down quite a few at first, just kind of speculating on where I'm going to need these lines, and then I add to these lines as I'm drawing the vehicle. Once I'm, if I approach a problem or I, I find an area that I'm drawing and I'm having problems with the perspective, then I might bounce back over to this layer and actually draw in a few more perspective lines to help me out. So. This layer will probably end up, by the end of this course, cluttered with perspective lines. So uh, thinking about other areas that we might want to come in and draw in a perspective line, maybe through the center of each one of these wheel hubs. Uh, but let's go ahead and think about maybe drawing one in there. I'm going to go ahead and click about right about there. Let's go ahead and click right about there. You can see that wasn't really close to where I wanted it to be, so I'm going to go ahead and come back in and try that again. And that's just about where it needs to be. So we'll go ahead and go with that. And I might just come in here and throw in a few more lines. Maybe we put one right about there. Maybe we come in here and draw in a perspective line on the back of these turrets. Let's go ahead and draw one in right about there. Something like that. Now you can see that, you know, once we've got several of these lines in place, especially when you look at lines that are as close in proximity as these two are, you can really see that these lines are pretty much parallel. Uh, they almost appear to be parallel. If, if there's any kind of distortion or vis, uh, visible distortion in these where maybe there's a little bit of tapering on this side, it's, it's very, very minor, if not almost invisible, here at this close of a magnification for our perspective. So you can really see here that 
the distortion on the overall perspective is very, very minimal when you're zoomed in this closely on an object. So uh, again, I'm going to come in just hitting a few more of these important lines that I want to keep for this particular design. Maybe hit that one right there. Kind of looking at this divot between the hubs here and kind of planning on what I'm going to keep and what I'm not going to keep. And I kind of like that, so I'm going to keep that. We'll come in here and kind of highlight both of those lines. Now, after I've laid down a line, I look at which side might be off just a little bit. And then you can actually use those little dots that you've laid down to make your adjustment based on that. So you can see here that as I drew in that line again, I, I drew it in the first time and it was off just a little bit on this side. So I undid it and basically repositioned this dot and adjusted that line. So again, the undo in Photoshop is Control Z. The step back is Control Alt Z. I'll probably be using those quite a bit throughout this course and I probably won't mention them uh, at any other point other than right now. So uh, if you don't know or, or are not familiar with those keyboard shortcuts, I would highly recommend memorizing those. Those are very useful keyboard shortcuts. Uh, we'll come in here, maybe hit this line right here. And let's see here, maybe even this line right here. And let's go ahead and leave that one out for now. Now another important line is probably going to be the center point of the vehicle, the one that runs right down the center of the vehicle. Uh, and this may take a few tries to get this exactly where I want it to be, but uh, I'm just going to come in here and we'll just do this just like we did any of the other perspective lines and obviously we're going to see a little bit more of this corner of the vehicle or this half because it's closer to the camera so uh, I may want to go ahead and accommodate for that by moving this first dot over just a little bit and maybe something like that well, let's come back a little bit and I'll move this one over just a little just kind of nitpicking exactly where I'm calling that center point. So you can see here that we've kind of just laid down a foundation of perspective that's really sort of built around the perspective that was used for the render of our 3D sketch. Now at this point I would probably come over here and with this perspective layer, uh, once we get to drawing this vehicle, the black lines are probably going to blend in quite a bit with the lines we're drawing. It may be easier for you to go ahead and change the color of these lines. There's a number of ways to do that here in Photoshop. I'm just going to go ahead and create an adjustment layer of a solid color. And let's just go ahead and let's make these sort of a purple color. Why not? And I'm going to go ahead and mouse over the area between that adjustment layer and this perspective layer and hold down my Alt key. You can see my cursor changes to two circles overlapping there. That's going to actually clip that to that perspective layer if I click in between the layers. So now that I've done that, it's turned all the pixels that have been filled on that perspective layer to that adjustment color. All right, so with that said, I may go ahead and add a few more perspective lines, just kind of examining the, the, the 3D sketch that we're working from here. But in the next lesson, what I'd like to do is I'd like to pick up where we're leaving off here, and I'd like to begin drawing in the basic shapes of the vehicle.